in 2011, you could carry this and this, or you could simply carry this. This is the Techno Reviewer. Roll the intro. The story begins around 2003 uh, when uh, Nokia had released the Engage. Well, obviously, this is one of those uh, uh, phone uh, which also plays games. Obviously, nowadays all phones play games. So, realistically, what is there to say? Well, in 2003, the the, the game was different. No pun intended. The idea was that uh, Nokia had uh, tried to reinvent the uh, the industry by releasing a sort of phone, a lot of sort of phones that uh, had many different features, and uh, every single one of them was different from the previous one. I mean, let's let's be honest. Uh, if I showed this like this very quickly, you wouldn't know what phone that was because they all looked the same. Back in uh, 2003, or at least the early the 2000s, the every phone was different, and Nokia had this, which was the Engage. Of course, it was a very, very awkward phone to use. Uh, yes, it did have a very nice gamepad. Obviously, you've got your gamepad and your buttons. Uh, but if you had to make a phone call, well, this is how you had to hold it. Uh, in the States, this was usually com call commonly called uh, the taco phone because it sort of resembles a taco. But in the UK, where I bought this, this was actually my per personal one. Um, well, it's just called an Engage. But this aside, in 2011, Sony Ericsson came to the rescue. The idea was that uh, the uh, the phone was supposed to have been released many, many years before, uh, and the idea was then forgotten. Um, but it was to be called the PlayStation phone. And in the end, this was it. It was the Nokia. Nokia. It was a Sony Ericsson, not a Nokia. Uh, it was the Sony Ericsson Xperia Play. Obviously, the phone itself is a fully functional phone, and well, if I click it, it does work, and it has the standard UI. Um, the UI is a standard uh, phone based with the Timescape uh, feature, which was very common at the time. The uh, the thing that set this aside from the rest of the phones was that if you just uh, well hold it like this and flick this up, it should reveal. Well, it doesn't. Oh. Let's go back to the main menu. But if you did, it would open. No, it doesn't. One second. Well, yeah, it would open the uh, this media crossbar type of uh, layout. Well, actually, it's not a media crossbar uh, or cross media bar XMB. Um, well, it's not. It's uh, it's more of a um, a function that allows you to pick different games and allows you to uh, see what you've got and perhaps play them. There's quite a few games on this one. What happened was that in 2019, in fact last year, I think around October, support to download these games was then completely revoked. You no longer had the access to the servers and you were no longer able to download the games. There are different ways that you can get games on this. Unfortunately, I can't show you them. But a bit of Google search will allow you to uh, to find how to do that. Well, I'm just going to show you some of this. So let's 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 have a look at it. Well, this is the uh, Sony Ericsson Xperia Play, and as you can see, it has uh, the shoulder buttons, uh, volume rocker, power button, and on the on the side, you've got USB charging socket along with the headphone jack. Sliding the device open will reveal the uh, full D-pad with very nice, comfortable buttons. There is also a select and a start button along with a menu button here. There are these two circular devices, which are circular pads, which actually act as the D-pads, well, the, the analog pads. Well, these are very uncomfortable to use, they are there. In most games, these will actually act as the L3, L2, and uh, R2 buttons because, as you can tell from the back, you've only got the L1 and R1 buttons. They are very, very nice, soft, clicky buttons, and 
when holding the device in your hands they are very comfortable but you can reach very well these triggers with your index and uh, with your index fingers the device does resemble a PSP of course it doesn't resemble this PSP in specific but it does resemble the PSP Go if you are familiar with the PSP Go it was the version of the PSP which had the sliding mechanism which actually looked like this my assumption is that what they actually did was they released the handset following the PSP success which was not because the PSP had no success PSP Go was not successful at all however sliding the device unlocked we reveal a selection of games which are available to on this particular device there is a couple of um, um, emulators on this device I've installed a PlayStation emulator as long as we have a DS emulator for reasons I cannot show you but I will show you what is also in, in, inside the, uh, the device as I said, uh, sliding the device closed will actually act just as a normal phone and you can in fact use it as a normal phone. It doesn't do anything that it shouldn't, it does everything it should. This was originally shipped with two, uh, with uh, Android um, 2.3.3 which does give it a bit of a uh, downside in when actually uh, using the device because it's quite slow nowadays. You can't really use it uh, as a phone anymore because it is quite quite slow as well as the market is not updatable and it does update to a certain version but it doesn't go to the latest um, Android Play well Google Play no Play Store however sliding through the menus it does seem pretty fluid and it is still a very nice device if you wanted to use this as a device to play games then yes this is the device for you if you only need to receive simple calls then this is the device However, sliding it open, we can launch a game. This was originally shipped with um, the ability to download a few games. Um, then the store was closed down and no longer available. But one of the pre preloaded games was Crash Bandicoot, which you needed to download. But well, the icon was there. Now there is a progress saved. I can continue that. And there you go. Now the game does load pretty quick and it's very very easy and intuitive to use. It has the same buttons as you would expect on the PlayStation along with the uh, this as standard triggers. So if I go on and actually play the game, you can see that it does allow you to play very very well. As I said, it's very, very, very intuitive. The game itself does work very well and it does not have any lag whatsoever. It is very difficult because I am using, I'm trying to look at the screen through the screen that I'm recording. So yeah, not the greatest. But resolution wise, what well, you can tell, it's not too bad. The game itself does offer like different features like uh, the uh, ability to change the controller settings, the volume and uh, if there are multiple disc games, there's also the ability to switch discs. This is not something on this particular game, but if you add, for example, uh, Metal Gear Solid, well, that did have the uh, second disc which you had to place. So that was the way that you could then switch the discs over while you're playing the game. The device itself, like I said, it's very, very comfortable. It's a pocket uh, device. It does not look very um, unappealing. In fact, it's a very, very nice, comfortable device. The camera isn't the greatest. The phone itself isn't the best to use, and it is now, uh, well, 10 years old. Of course, placing this against one of today's sort of uh, now, I'm not going to say flagship because this is not a flagship device, but putting placing it against one of the today's phones, you can tell that it's a very small device. This is what people generally use today. This is the kind of size that people use today, and this is the kind of size that people used back in 10 years ago. The device itself does have uh, a, uh, a Snapdragon processor, which runs at 1 gigahertz, has 512 megabytes of RAM, and has uh, 500 uh, megabytes of internal storage which is not very good at all because you cannot do anything however although people have always said that this only went up to uh, an SD card of the size of 32 gigabytes I can assure you that it does not 
I have put a 64 gigabyte SD card in there and it runs absolutely fine. The games load fine, the times are just as good and there is no, uh, no lag in loading. This is the Xperia Play and if you wanted to play a game on the go, then yeah, I would say that this is probably the best option. Why not go for one? They're actually really cheap nowadays. You can buy them, uh, well, used on eBay. Uh, you can also buy them on uh, AliExpress or rec reconditioned or refurbished. I bought this one from eBay and to be honest, it's one of them that you need to buy. You, it's a must have for any gamer, even though it may not look like a, a game, but if you are a retro gamer, this will run all your old emulators. This has been uh, the Techno Reviewer, and uh, this was a segment, well, let's call it the Retro Review. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and do all that good stuff. I've also got now links for Patreon if anyone wants to sponsor me and help me with um, channel, well, my uh, growing of the channel. I've also got my Instagram, so don't, don't forget to check out my Instagram. And uh, well, we'll catch you soon. This has been uh, the Technical Reviewer, and I'm signing out.